everyone and welcome back to another 11 plus preparation video. My name is Hayden and you might be looking at the screen thinking, Hayden, this is clearly some maths. You've called this verbal reasoning. Well, I have a little secret for you. In verbal reasoning, there are sometimes questions that don't just include letters, but actually include numbers and digits. For example, this question you can see on the screen right here. So in this video, we're going to go over three different types of maths verbal reasoning questions that use numbers as part of their puzzles. So let's take a look at this first one. It's a very straightforward question that we call substitution. You are told the values of A, B, C, D, and E. For example, A is worth 12, B is 4, and so on. And then it simply says this, what is the answer to this sum written as a letter? And you've got to substitute in A divided by D times E. Now you'll be pleased to know that we are not testing you on the order of operations, which is something you learn in year six, which tells you which part of the equation you should be doing first if there are multiple operations like divide, add, subtract, or multiply, which ones to come first. In these questions, you simply have to do them from the left to the right and get the answer. So very simple strategy for this one, which is just to write above the letters what they are worth based on the code or the key rather above. So if A is 12, we just write 12, we copy the symbol divided by D, which is three, we write that and then we write the symbol and E, which is two. And now we've just got to solve this question. It becomes a lot more basic, doesn't it? Doing it from left to right, what's 12 divided by three? 12 divided by three is four. We hold four on our head, then we do the next bit. What's four times two? Four times two is eight, we write it down and then we simply have to match up our answer to one of the codes above. Now, what's nice about this is if you get a number, let's say we got nine and then we look up here and nine doesn't exist, then we know we've done something wrong because it has to be one of these five answers. But luckily eight is the same as C, so we know that C is our answer. And it really is as simple as that. So I thought I'd start with the easiest one, you know, get you guys warmed up, but do stick around for this video because there's a much, much harder verbal reasoning maths question for you to actually have a go at in a minute. So first of all, let's have a little practice, pause the video. I want you to have a go at this one. Now you know the rules. Nice and straightforward, right? Let's do the exact strategy. C is four. We're gonna times that by D, which is seven. We can even do it as we go if we want. We can hold four times seven is 28 in our head right now. 28, 28, 28, 28. And then we know we're gonna divide that by B, which is two. 28 divided by two is 14. I can see that 14 is the same as A, so A is my answer, okay? Quite straightforward. Right, we're feeling warmed up, yeah? Let's have a look at a, a slightly harder type of question that uses numbers. This is a bit more like verbal reasoning, isn't it? Because we often see this presentation, but with letters and words, and we have to think about uh, how the letters interact with each other and what they do to make the middle one. It's very similar. It's very similar. So have a look at this one with me. This is the rules. You have a number and another number with another number in between them. There is some sort of relationship between the outside numbers that makes the inside number. It gives you one example, and then it gives you another example. And then on the third one, you ha have to, you or figure out what that relationship is and apply it to this last pair of numbers to work out its middle number. So have a think, what could it be? Now here's some go-tos. When I look at the two numbers, I'm constantly thinking of the four operations. I'm always thinking add, subtract, multiply, divide. Now this first one is fairly straightforward because it's just one step but you'll see in the next question that we actually have to open our minds sometimes to maybe even two operations happening to get to the middle. So what do we think? When I see a bigger number, my first instinct is either to add or multiply. And I know if I multiplied these numbers, I'd get an enormous number. So my gut feeling is to add them and see what happens. Let's do 59 add 32 and just double check. You could probably do it in your heads, but I'm just for the sake of this video, let's just check. Uh, nine plus two, is 11, five plus three is eight, plus one more is nine. So that makes 91 and that's what's in the middle, cool. I'm pretty happy, but we should always confirm it because sometimes they put in really, really nasty, tricky questions where there's maybe two ways of making the middle in the first one. You've assumed it's the wrong one and then skip straight to the answer. And the second one very much confirms how it works. So 27 plus 38, I can confirm just by doing it in my head. 20 plus 30 is 50 and seven plus eight is 15, 50 plus 15 is 65. So I'm very confident that I'm just adding the two outside numbers to make the inside one. So let's do it with this last one then. What's the quickest way, you tell me, what is the quickest way to add 57 and 19? If you're screaming at the screen right now saying, add 20 and then take away one, that's exactly what I'm thinking. If you weren't thinking that, you can just pretend because this is a pre-recorded video and I can't actually hear you. So 
yeah, that kind of ruined that. So 57 plus 20 is 77. Take away one is 76. And there's my answer. Okay. So I promised you a slightly harder one, right? So before we do that, parents listen up, scan this QR code right here. Get yourself to our website. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lessons, premium lessons that come with downloadable worksheets. We have a lesson on this very mathematical concept today. I've actually taken a couple of the questions that I'm using in this video from our worksheet of more and more questions. Now, all of our lessons come with obviously the homework and also a homework walkthrough video. So if you get if your child gets a bit stuck, then they can actually watch the walkthrough video that explains how to answer every single question as well. And a few of the lessons we put on there for free just to kind of hook you guys in and you can have a little look, you can have a bit of a taster, see what we're all about. But yeah, check out this QR code or use the link in the description. Take you right there, make an account, get some free stuff. Back to the video. I promised you a harder one. I'm gonna give you nothing. I'm just gonna say, have a go. What do you think the relationship is between the middle number and the outside numbers? And when you've worked it out, what's this last one gonna be? Good luck. So at first glance, hopefully you were thinking, oh, two plus nine, isn't 17 the difference between two and nine is seven? Is there a link there? Maybe it's the difference plus 10. Mm, the difference between these is five plus 10 is 15. That doesn't work. Eight times three isn't 23. Two times nine isn't 17. Only through going, like exploring and going through all of the different options will you eventually go, ah, I've spotted something. It's not natural necessarily to just look at it and go, oh yes, I know what's happening here. You have to try lots of things. So for me, it was when I thought to myself, Oh, when I multiply them together, I don't get this. When I multiply two and nine, I get 18. And when I multiply eight and three, I get 24. And at that moment, I went, oh, hang on a minute. These numbers are just one less than what I get when I multiply them together. So that's what's happening. We're timesing them together and then we're subtracting one. So this is a two step um, problem unlike the last one, which was just one step, we just added them. So now I've worked it out, it works for both, we can very much apply it to this. If we times them together, we get 20. If we subtract one, we get 19. So therefore, 19 is my answer. Pretty cool, right? Guys, stick around, because I've got one more question type to show you. And again, a bit more like non-verbal reasoning now, where we get sequences in verbal reasoning, sometimes we get sequences of numbers. Very mathematical, I know. So have a look at this one. Um, Nice and simple sequence to get you started with, just to get the concept out there. What's happening in this sequence? Well, to work on a sequence, you should always be looking at the difference between the numbers and thinking to yourself, is it a kind of addition or subtraction sequence? Because if it is, it'll very much be the same gap, or maybe it's an alternating sequence. It might be adding one, taking away two, adding one, taking away two, but the gaps will very much be the same throughout. Whereas if it's multiplying or dividing, you'll see that the gaps get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, or smaller, 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 because multiplying is something that we call exponential. If you multiply by two and then multiply by two again, and then multiply by two again, the numbers get very big, very quickly. So looking at this one, I think it's quite clear. It's very simple that it's just a three times table. We're just going up by three each time. We're adding three, adding three. If we add another three, we get to 15, right? Really, really simple sequence. So now we kind of understand the process of this. Have a go at one that's slightly harder. What do you think is happening in this sequence and what comes last? I'll tell you what a lot of kids do. They just work out the first and they go plus two, cool, brilliant plus two, and then they get their answer of 17, move on, got it wrong. You know, that's what they do, because they're not thinking. But you guys are thinking. So if we look at the first one, you might be thinking plus two, you might be thinking maybe it was times by three. Let's try them both. What happens next? If I plus two, I get five. If I times by three, I get nine. So it looks like neither of those things worked. Maybe, my next thought is always, maybe it's an alternating sequence. Maybe one thing happens, then a different thing happens. Then the first thing happens, then the different thing happens. You know, it just goes back and forth between the two things. Well, let's have a look. How do I get from three to seven? Well, the easiest way to describe that in one step is plusing four, right? So let's go with this for a minute. Let's see if it's the adding. Maybe it's plus two, plus four, plus two, plus four. Well, it's seven plus two is nine. Aha, I think I've got it. Nine plus four is 13. 13 plus two is 15, there we go, it's plus two, plus four, plus two, plus four, plus two. So the next logical step here is to plus four and get ourselves to 19. And there we have it. Three different uh, types of verbal reasoning that use numbers and seem very mathsy. Guys, I'm gonna leave you two this time. I'm, I'm breaking the rules, not just one, I'm leaving you two questions. So have a go at this sequence. It's one of my favorite sequences. Hopefully you can work it out. It's really sad, isn't it, that I've got a favorite sequence. If only I could edit that out, but I won't. 
And here's another one for you with a bit of substitution, just using E times D times A, take away B. What do you get here? Leave a comment down below. And don't forget, parents, go and check out our website. You can get loads of free resources on there. And if you want to sign up to the premium stuff, why not? It's, there's, a, there's a whole library of hundreds of videos there you can use. And I promise you, it's good stuff. I made it. <laughs> and Dylan, I suppose. See you in the next video.